for the way God has been using Papa and, and this message. I'm really, really excited. Um, I want to show you some things really, really quickly. How many of you know God's mercy is found, like, when you want to know God, there's something you must know about God, that God is faithful and God is merciful. And I, I'm, I'm not going to go through all of it here, but if you can open up Psalms 136 for me, I won't go through the whole chapter, but that whole chapter you just see, you're just praising God and celebrating God, and they're saying, Lord, great is your kindness and great is your mercy. They had experienced something about God. They knew something about God. That, so please open Psalms 126. You can open right from verse 1. I'll just read maybe three or four verses. I just want to show you guys, but go through. Read that whole chapter, and you're going to begin to see. They, it was literally a whole chapter just celebrating and praising the God of great mercy. If we can have it up there, just my computer's a little slow. Thank you. Thank you. It says, oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is what? For he is what? Good and what? His mercy endureth forever. Verse 2. Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods for his mercy endures forever. Verse 3. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord of lords for his mercy endures forever. Verse 4. To him who alone does great wonders for his what? Mercy endures forever. Verse 5. Keep going. To him that by wisdom made the heavens for his what? Mercy endures forever. Verse 6. To him that stretched out the earth above the waters for his mercy endures forever. Verse 7. To him that made great light for his mercy endureth. What? Somebody say forever. Say forever. Say forever. His mercy endureth what forever which means is unchanging so if you want to know God you must know this mercy you have to know this mercy go to Psalms 25 verse 6 the men of faith of old understood that God was a God of mercy it's funny because most times when we think of the old covenant when we think of the Old Testament, when we think of Israel, we think the law. We think punishment. We think errors and mistakes. We think failures. Some of you may know, some of you may not know, but on my mother's side, before she converted to Christianity, she was actually a religious and a biological Jew. And so, even though... She had converted to Christianity as God began to, because her family actually had disowned her at one point. And God began to restore her back. And when I was young, we used to go to my aunt's house for a Passover. And that Psalms 136, whenever they're reciting about going back to Israel, when we get towards the end of the book, we'd go through and, we, and each of us would be reading that chapter. For his mercy endures forever. For his mercy endures forever. For his mercy endures forever. So it was drilled into their understanding that yes you have made mistakes but the mercy of God is everlasting somebody say amen. amen and so the great fathers of faith understood that mercy can be provoked that you can call on the God of mercy and he will hear and he will respond. And I want you to understand something like when he's saying, remember, O Lord, thy mercy. It's not like God's like, oh yeah, I forgot, mercy. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not, it's not like God has Alzheimer's. But it's a means of talking to provoke divine response. David is saying, Lord, I remember it. Lord, I remember you are a God of mercy. I know who you are, Lord. Show yourself. And God loves it. God loves the cry of the righteous when they cry to him and say, Lord, your mercy. And so look at what he says here. He says, remember, O God, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindnesses, for they have been ever of what? Ever of what? So David's like, Lord, this is not a new thing. This is not a new thing. This is, this is foundational for God's character. And I want you to, 
to understand something. What David was actually saying there is, Lord, remember your all-encompassing mercy. Why do I say that? The word for tender mercies there is the feminine noun that can be translated mercy. The word for loving kindness is there is the masculine noun that also can be translated mercy. So David was like, Lord, I'm calling on every kind of mercy. <laughs> Every form of mercy. Lord, remember your all-encompassing mercy. Nobody's left out of the mercy of God. And so really quickly, I want to give you four things about the nature of his mercy. Just really quick. Maybe by the grace of God, we'll look into this a bit more. But four things about the nature of, of his mercy is number one, it is sure. Say sure. It's called the sure mercies of David. Isaiah 55, 3 says, I will give you an everlasting covenant, even the sure mercies of David. So it's number one is what? Sure. Number two, it's great. Say great. great. Listen, God's mercy is great. It's great in capacity. It's great in scope. And it's great in its goodness to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it's great in what it's able to do, but it's also great to experience. You must experience it. Great. Number three, his mercy is everlasting or enduring. And I want you to understand that very, very quickly because everlasting means that God doesn't change and that he's merciful. But enduring in that, you know sometimes like your patience has a limit. You know, I will, I, I will put up this far. God's mercy is enduring. Hallelujah. And then number four, his mercy is tender. His mercy is gentle. His mercy is, is loving. That's why there's a feminine noun for it. And the men of old cried, God, remember your mercy. Remember your mercy. And some incredible things begin to happen when God remembers mercy. And I specifically, just because of time, I want to show you something that when I was looking at it, I was just like, God, this is amazing. When I, when I saw this this morning, I was just like, God, was in, this, is, this is just incredible. But I, l let me give you some things quickly. You can just write down for your own notes about the effects of mercy when it's remembered. Number one, no more wrath. Say, no more wrath. Yeah. Habakkuk said, Lord, in wrath, remember mercy. In wrath, remember mercy. Number two, it ends afflictions. Number three, it takes away tears. Number four, stagnation. And we'll, I'll explain this more, but just, I just want you, because I want you to be excited. Just like, listen, the testimonies of beauty that came out of that month as we were engaging, is just, been, I mean, God has just been blowing my mind. I feel like, you know when you're a new believer and you're like encountering God, for, that's what it feels like for me. I'm like, God, is this real? Even... Papa, I just, I love the testimony you are sharing, you know, last month just about, about the way God did that in, in, with the account. That even Papa, who's been in the Lord longer than I've been alive, and he was just like, like his mouth is open. That this God is bringing us back to a place where it's just like, can God really do this? Like the, the, Papa is a book of testimonies, and yet it's like, can God really do this? And you're just like, God, what is going on? So in the same way you have been engaging beauty, please, I want you to go after mercy. Because when I saw this, hallelujah, when I saw this this, this morning, I just saw, I was like, God, can you, is this really how great your mercy is? And so really quickly, strangulations, it gets rid of oppression and struggles. But I want to take, and I'm going to round up, it's a large portion of scripture, but I want to round up on this, and, and then we'll get ready for the communion. But I was just like, God, this, this just blew my mind. Go to 2 Samuel 24. 2 Samuel 24, and uh, we're going to look from verses 10 to 25. Go back and study the scripture if you don't see what I'm saying here. But I was just like, wow, wow. <laughs> like God, like God, how great is your mercy? So, how many of you know what's going on here? Quick show of hands. Let me see if you're online, comment. Yeah, I know the scripture, Pastor David. Okay, okay. So, what's going on here is David made a boo-boo. Okay? David made an accident. 
And I, and I was thinking about this. I'm like, Lord, why would you? Because 1 Samuel really talks about David on his path to becoming king. But 2 Samuel is all about David as king. And when you look throughout Samuel, like Samuel paints David in a very good light. Chronicles paints David in a very good light. But the book of Kings paints most of the kings in a very bad light. And so I was like, Lord, this is so weird because the very last chapter of Samuel is as if you are ending on David's mistake. And I, and I was like, Lord, this is all so weird. Why would you end on David's mistake? But when we're done, you'll see he didn't end on David's mistake. He ended, the book doesn't end on David's mistake. It ends on the greatness of God's mercy. Amen. Hallelujah. So David made a mistake and, he, and he, he counts all the people and he does what he shouldn't have done and he knew better. And God in his mercy even sent Joab and said, hey David, don't number the people. God will add more. God, you know when you're about to make a mistake, God will send someone and be like, that's wrong. Don't do that. And then when you're, like we were learning this morning, can you receive discipline? Can you receive correction? Because God will send people. And so God sends someone, David's like, I don't want to listen to you. So he numbers the people. And then verse 10 is like David woke up. You know sometimes you've done something wrong and in the midst of it you don't feel any way. And then when you're done, you're like, ah, what have I just done? You know what I'm talking about? Do you guys know what I'm talking about? You're just, ah, Lord, <laughs> what have I done? And so that's David. It says, David's heart smote him. After that, he had numbered the people. And David said unto the Lord, I've sinned greatly. And that I've done. And now I beseech thee, O Lord, take away the iniquity of your servant. For I've done very foolishly. Look at verse 11. Let's continue. For when David was up in the morning, the word of the Lord came unto the prophet Gad, David's seer, saying, verse 12, yeah. Go and say unto David, thus saith the Lord, I offer you three things. Choose thee one of them that I may do it unto thee. Verse 13. So God came to David and told him, I said unto him, and said unto him, Shall seven years of famine come unto your land? Or will you flee three months before thine enemies while they pursue? Or that there may be three days pestilence in the land? Now advise and see what answer I shall return to him that sent me. It's like, I'm going back to the big man. <laughs> what do you say, David? And David said unto God, Now I want you to understand something because in Canada, in North America, it's hard for us to understand famine. You know what I mean? Like seven years of famine, it's like, so what? I'm not going to be able to eat as much McDonald's? It's like, no, no, no. Like in famine, like countries can be wiped out. Yeah, there's the seven years of famine can destroy a nation. Three and a half years almost destroyed Egypt if it wasn't for God's intervention. Three, year, uh, three months of being put to the sword... Do you remember what Elisha said? He's like, you should have struck the ground, the arrow six times. But because you did three, you only win three battles, only destroy them. So six battles could have wiped out a nation. Three months of being put to flight? Scary. And then he said, or three months of pestilence. David actually didn't choose any of them. He didn't. He said, or will you choose three months of pestilence? Look at what David said. He said, and he said unto Gad... I'm in a great strait. Let us now fall into pestilence, fall into famine, fall into the hands of our enemies. He said, let me fall into the hand of the Lord. Why was David doing this? For his mercies are great. Let me not fall into the hand of man. Now I want, because, okay, that's good. Okay, God let him choose. That's when we blew my mind. Look at, okay, go to verse 15. I, I want you to see this. So the Lord sent a pestilence. So, okay, God chose pestilence, right? Okay. So the Lord sent a pestilence upon Israel from the morning even to the time appointed. And there died of the people from Dan even to Beersheba 70,000 men. Verse 16. And when the angel stretched out his hand upon Jerusalem to destroy it, what happened? Hold on, was, was David doing anything? He wasn't doing anything. David didn't know what was going on. He didn't pick the pestilence. God picked it. 
David doesn't know that there's some wrath already working against him. He's just like, I'm trusting in mercy, Lord. Lord, your mercy. Remember 25. Oh, Lord, remember your mercy and your tender kindness. And the angel wanted to keep going. The angel wanted to keep going. Look, he stretched out his hand for Jerusalem. God says, stop. Wait. God, I thought you picked this. But there was somebody under mercy operating in Jerusalem. And so when he got to the place of mercy, huh, God said, wait, 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 stop. And David doesn't know what's going on. Is it the famine? Is it the pestilence? Nothing has struck him yet. Nothing has hit yet. Yet for three days in the whole nation, people are dying. And you want to know how I know that David didn't know anything was going on? Look, it says, and the angel of the Lord was by the threshing place of Aruna, the Jebusite. 17. Keep going. And David, now, and David spoke unto the Lord when he what? Saw the angel that smote the people and said, Lo, I have sinned and I have done wickedly. But these sheep, what have they done? Let thine hand, I pray. So David didn't start praying until after God had already stopped it. Hmm? David wasn't aware of the angel. Who opened David's eyes? The Lord showed David what was going on. Because even in mercy, God was giving him the answer. Huh. Can I say that again? Listen, maybe you didn't hear me. David made the mistake. David made the error. David didn't know what was going on. And so great is God's mercy that before it even hit him, God said, open your eyes, David. His eyes open and he sees the angels. Oh my God. I can't believe the angel's on the way. And he thinks the angel's still working. But God had already told the angel, stop. He says, but these sheep, what have they done? Lord, let it just come on me, not Jerusalem. And verse 18, look at what happens. David was praying for the people, right? Was David praying for the answer? He was praying for the people. He was just like, Lord, strike me down. He wasn't even thinking of the answer. But look at how great this mercy is. No, no, come, come, look at this mercy. God came that day to David. David's like, Lord, only kill me. And the Lord sent, David wasn't praying for an answer. And yet God in his mercy said, not only am I showing you what's going on when you were ignorant, but I'm going to give you the answer when you didn't ask for it. And God came that day to David and said unto him, Go up, rear an altar unto the Lord in the threshing floor of Aruna, the Jebusite. David was just like, Lord, only kill me. <laughs> that was his prayer. And God said, I'm going to give you an answer. Verse 19. And David, according to the same... So I want... Can, can you guys see that? Can you see that? David was in error. And he said, I will fall into mercy. God stops the plague from striking Jerusalem. David doesn't even know there's an angel there. That's why he's like, Lord, what's going on? These sheep, don't kill them. David wasn't praying for the 70,000 that died. He was praying for those in Jerusalem. Like, Lord, don't kill them. It was my error. Listen, when you're talking about how powerful and how great is that mercy, even David's past mistake, even though David was in error, God was like, I'm still going to open your eyes. I'm going to show you how to get out of this. I'm going to show you how to do this better. Even though you weren't even praying for it, you were just like, I, Lord, I accept my fate. How great is his mercy to reverse errors, to undo errors and mistakes, even when we don't know the problem. Maybe you are struggling with something and you're like, Lord, I don't even know where this is coming from. Fall on his mercy. Lord, remember your mercy. I've been struggling. I've been trying. That error has been following me. But Lord, remember your mercy. I don't know what to do. And suddenly your eyes open up. 
Uh, so this is what's been added. Lord, what do I do? Your mercy, Lord. You can call on mercy. You can fall on mercy like David. Say, Lord, your mercy. I don't, I don't, I don't care. I'm, Lord, I'm not picking. I pick mercy. Tell your neighbor, I pick mercy. Hmm, hmm. Oh, say, I pick mercy. Yeah, listen, I don't know what's going on, but I hope today, I hope today from whatever has been troubling you, rather than looking for problems, you will fall upon the mercy of God and your deliverance will appear. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, clever Jesus. So, it didn't end in David's era. It ended showing the greatness of God's mercy. Because what happened? When David, because I want you to understand something. Mercy does what against judgment? Rejoices, triumphs over judgment. The angel stopped, but was still poised to blot out Jerusalem. And if you read the rest of the verse, it says, when David made the sacrifice, when David brought the sacrifice it says then everything was at peace so god in his mercy even when he's doing judgment like we were learning this morning god is a father who he chastens he disciplines but it's because he loves at the end he wants our best god in his mercy while david was still under judgment god was giving them the answer you you know why my kids love my wife so much you know why they love her so much because when daddy's being very strict, you can't do this, you can't do this. They will go and they will plead to their mom. Now, she will back me up sometimes. Most times she will back me up, amen. But they know if they need to plead mercy. <laughs> they know if they need to plead mercy. Mommy is the mercy person. And then she will enter, she, she, she will say, okay, I, I know what you're saying. What do you think? Can we show them mercy? Can we? She won't do it in front of them. She doesn't disrespect me in front of them. She's very, she's wise. But she'll talk to me and help me to go back and think, am I doing this because it's good for their purpose? Or am I doing this because I'm frustrated? If I'm doing it for their purpose, I'll tell her no. But if I'm in an emotion and, and she's, I will remember the mercy. I'll say, okay, you know what? You're right. And I'll go and I'll talk to them. And I'll let them know, okay, you know what? This is why we have made this choice. Right? So they... So David knew, fall on mercy, go to mercy, go to mercy. And so God, even though he's in judgment at the same time, he's like, David, I'm mad, this is what you do. <laughs> David, this is wrong, this is the answer. And so you don't actually see until I think it's verse 22 or 23 that when he made the sacrifice, that was when the anger was abated, then the angel left. So there was still something David needed to do, but God in his mercy, because you know what? David could have been trying to figure out what to do for the threshing. David could have been trying to figure out the threshing floor while the angel was threshing Jerusalem. But because there was a man of mercy, rise up to your feet. I pray for you this morning. Oh, I'll begin to pray in tongues Thank right you. Lord. Because you are a person of mercy. Because the Lord has chosen mercy for you. I pray for you. Whatever judgment, whatever judgment of sin has been targeting anything around you, your home or your family, your business or your finances, because of this great mercy, because of this strong mercy, whatever forces have stretched forth their hand against your home, against your dwelling, against your children, against your finances, by the mercy of the Lord, by the mercy of the Lord, let them be cut off. Jesus name amen. amen amen every head bowed and every eye closed if you have yet to make Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life say this prayer with me really quickly and we're gonna flow into the next portion say Lord Jesus thank you for dying my death for paying the price for me 
for giving me mercy for showing me mercy today I receive your mercy your great mercy your sure mercy I believe you died for me and you rose again to justify me to save me Jesus you are my Lord amen and if you need healing in your body I pray for you the mercy of the Lord touch you there right now any illegal judgment against your body by the mercy of the Lord by the